we got to address uh, Patrick Queen signing inside linebacker, former Raven. I mean, you can make an argument that that's the biggest signing the Pittsburgh Steelers have ever made, ever. $41 million, comes over 24 years old. Your thoughts on Patrick Queen? Uh, perfect signing, home run, um, to the point that like the money almost doesn't even matter. Um, like you, I, I don't know. Like you, uh, you look at three years, forty-one million dollars, and uh, that's a big number. And and for a team with limited cap space, you, I don't know, that number would scare you if it was any other player. Um, yeah. This is a team that has been wandering the woods looking for, you know, decent uh, inside linebacker play, and you got excellent linebacker play, uh, inside linebacker play with this signing. He is a perfect fit. Um, you not only take him away from your biggest rival, but you add to your biggest hole in your defense. Um, yep. There is, there is no one more perfect for this defense than, than Patrick queen. So um, you pay him whatever money he wants. Um, he can eat up as much of the salary cap as he wants. And it, this was just a move that the Steelers needed to make. And it was uh, a home run. As soon as they did it, I don't think anyone had a negative reaction to it, which no. is, pretty rare for a free agent signing like I, I thought i'd see someone saying he's overpaid or something like that no he is he is a perfect signing at the at the perfect price uh any any price is really a bargain for patrick queen to be quite honest um yes yeah i i don't think i can find anything wrong with this I, i'd be shocked if anyone else did either so i saw espn give him a c plus which is wild to me what Dude's c plus c plus grade couldn't I couldn't believe it at all. I was like, what? That makes zero sense. Just to run through, like, I, because I immediately was like, all right, well, let's just explain to everybody why they're wrong here. 24 years old, was a second team all pro last season, made the Pro Bowl, had 133 tackles or something like that, is blazing fast for an inside linebacker, is a good coverage option. And his estimated market value, we talked, me and Nick talked about this yesterday. His estimated market value was $18 million. The Pittsburgh Steelers got him on a team-friendly deal. This year, it's just over $6.5 million for a cap hit. And overall, you're paying him an average of $13.6 or something million. dollars. You got this guy for a bargain, team-friendly deal, 24 years old, all pro, easily the biggest inside linebacker on the market. I mean, just looks like a steal. Like, this is a, this, a, how it's a steal. It, you, could, you could be a fan of Patrick Queen or not a pa fan of Patrick Queen. You have to look at it realistically and say for what the Pittsburgh Steelers paid for a guy that gives them their best shot at recreating success at inside linebacker. I mean, there's just no questions. There's no questions. He is like I saw people tweeting it out and it's it is like it's arguably the biggest free agent signing the Pittsburgh Steelers have made in the last. I mean, maybe ever. I'm not going to go that far back because I just don't know. I can't sit here and confidently say I know every single Steelers free agent signing but i'll tell you that in in the last i don't know 10 years i think it's pretty high up there if not the best and gives them the best shot to just totally revamp that defense and like clear up a major hole like it's been to go from i mean you could run through them john bostic avery williamson um at one it was vince williams robert spillane devin bush and Miles Jack were like the guys that were like, all right, at some point, somebody is going to fill this hole for the Pittsburgh Steelers. The names that they've gone through to come out with this, I just think that it's it's like almost honestly worth the wait. It's crazy. Yeah, it's it's like uh, that Browns jersey with all the quarterbacks. You got to do one yes. with the with the inside <laughs> yes. linebackers for the Steelers. Um, That's what it is. That's exa exactly yeah. what it is. Yeah, you think they're like done they're signing inside linebackers. Um, uh, I mean, maybe add some depth here or there, but I mean, I think you're, you feel pretty good about Cole Holcomb and, uh, I mean, is the Landon Roberts still under contract? I feel like yes. I, I just realized I didn't know that. Yeah. You've got, you've got plenty of inside linebackers right there. Um, and you've got depth too. Like if you have some disaster, like, or even a third of, I mean, if you have a disaster like last year where literally every linebacker goes down, um, then you're, you're you know, out of luck that, that you can't really do anything about that. But um, you got as much depth, as much starting quality depth as I think you could possibly stack on on one team in reasonable within reasonable expectations. So um, I, I think it's more likely that they, you know, pick up some some cheap guy for depth or they I, I mean, I think they still could like draft a guy like real late and just say, you know, yeah, you seem like the a next project. Mark Robinson. Pretty much. I mean, like you just need someone to, like you need bodies there at a certain point. Um, I think that's possible, but 
I don't think they're making any kind of splash moves. I don't think they're because I mean, just you don't need three. You don't need more than three starting quality inside linebackers, right? Like that's it's not. I mean, signing someone like that is gonna cost more money than it's worth, and you've got you've got three starting quality guys on the roster right now, right? So, so yesterday I talked about this, and I feel probably just as confident, especially after after this one. I think the Steelers might release Cole Holcomb. I think that really? is a possibility. Why? Because he, you don't know when he's going to be healthy. Omar Khan did not sound very confident he was going to be ready for training camp, which I think worries them. He's back to back season ending injuries. That's very concerning for a guy who is 27, going to be 28 years old. And I think if Jerome Baker is healthy, I think they look at him and say, this is a dude who has made more impact in the NFL, who probably does more of what we're looking for, who, you know, we took a shot on Cole Holcomb, but let's let's move on. I don't have the number. I had it in front of me. I think they save four million dollars, four point some million dollars by getting rid of Cole Holcomb. I don't know what Baker's salary is going to be, but I would expect it's cheap because he was released with a failed physical. So if you could come in here and say, hey, look at our team doctors tell you, tell us that he's good to go. I think it's a possibility. Like, I think if I had Justin Simmons, I feel very confident in. And, you know, who knows? By the time we're done recording this, he could sign elsewhere. But releasing Cole Holcomb and signing Jerome Baker, if I had to make like a, hey, make a bold prediction, that would be my bold prediction for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Just because I think that that you don't know when he's going to be healthy thing, I think that concerns the hell out of them. And I just don't see them going into into training camp saying, well, we have two right now, and hopefully Cole's good to go, but we don't really know because, you know, at this point it's a it's a question mark. Yeah, I, that makes sense when you spell it out. Um, I, I don't know. I I don't really. If you made me, if you held it to my head, I don't think I would bet on that. But yeah. <laughs> uh, I see the logic behind it. Um, yeah. and, and Jerome Baker would be a, a pretty fine guy to fill in uh, yes. at that spot. I did not know about Baker's fail, Baker failing a physical that yeah, that makes why. things a lot easier. Yeah, yeah. he uh, sprained MCL, dislocated wrist. I don't think that they released him with the failed physical designation. At least that's not what I saw. Um, but Drew Rosenhaus's agent like went on a went on a radio show or something and was talking about how he failed the physical and that's why they let him go. Yeah, uh, and, and I mean Baker is really you know if you're releasing a guy like Cole Holcomb, I mean Baker's really the only yeah. other guy that you like. There's no. No, I don't know. It gets real thin after Jerome Baker, to be quite honest. I mean, it's like we're getting down into like Devin Bush territory. I mean, Levante yes. David is no, no, no he, he got signed. Yesterday. He got signed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Spotra or uh, over the cap takes a minute to update, but like then we're getting into like Devin Bush territory, and it's uh, that's not a place that you want to be. I mean, Isaiah Simmons too. Like, not a ton of options out there once you get past. Uh, once you get past a guy like a guy like Jerome Baker, um, yeah. So, yeah. I mean, yeah, if you can get him for, for relatively cheap, I, I just don't think they should be spending, you know, big money on a third inside linebacker. You no, know? no. Like, Got to be under $10 million. Uh, definitely under $10 million. Maybe under like $8 million for Jerome Baker, which I think maybe you could get. And it's got to be a team-friendly deal. I think it could be – if it goes down, I'll tell you exactly how it's going to go down. It'll go – it'll be it'll be the exact way that Alandon Roberts signed with the Steelers last year and then – it was like, I think it, it was either a Landon or Cole. I don't remember the order, but one of them signed. And then later the other one signed. And then they released miles Jack. They made sure that they had their inside linebackers. Then they moved on from their current inside linebackers. I can see that being the case this year. I see that being the case when it comes to like a DJ reader and Larry Ogan, Joby, like it's They're going to sign first. Then they're going to release that way that they, they can, they can sure up exactly what's going on. 